Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Gareth here from tastitudes.com. As you create in Photoshop, there will be occasions where you will want to change the size, shape and form of creative objects in your composition to meet your design and imagination. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss and demonstrate how to manipulate creative elements in our canvas area by using the transform tools. By the end of this tutorial, you will feel comfortable transforming and manipulating creative elements in Photoshop. Now, the best way to learn is by watching and doing. So to help you, I have created this worksheet. To follow along with this video, you will need to open this document I have prepared especially for this tutorial. This document can be found in the Essential Practice folder in the Project folder. Now you can download this project folder for free. The download link is in the description. So with the project folder open, click Essential Practice, open the Transform folder and open the Transform PSD. Then you should have something that looks like this. Now along the way, I will be mentioning some useful shortcut keys, which you can find in the description and in the shortcut key page in the project PDF, which you can also download in the description. So here we have the document open. And if we look in the layers panel, we can see this document consists of multiple layers. Here we have a blue background layer and some origami birds, each on their individual layers. Now in Photoshop, there are lots of ways to transform your creative. So let's say we want to flip the entire canvas. This can be done easily by coming up to the top menu and clicking on image. If I scroll down, there is an option here called image rotate. If I place my mouse cursor over this, we can see a few options. I can flip the canvas in various degrees. I can flip vertically or horizontally. On this occasion, I'm going to select flip horizontal. So upon click, the entire document has flipped horizontal. So this could be useful if I have a photo I would like to flip. Now, as you just saw, there are other options there in the image rotate menu. Be sure to experiment with those. So I'll press command Z to undo that. Now, what if I want to flip a particular layer in my composition horizontally? Now this can be done easily, but we need to follow a different path. So first I need to select the particular layer I wish to transform. So I'll select the red bird layer. This time, instead of coming to image, I'll come to edit. If I scroll down and come to transform, you will see a number of transform options. On this occasion, I will select flip horizontal. Upon click, we will see the layer flip horizontal. So remember to flip the entire document, we need to go to image, image rotate, and to flip a layer, we must first select the layer and go to Edit, Transform. So with the Move tool, I'll just move my red bird up a little, like so. So next, I want to introduce you to the Free Transform tool. The Free Transform tool in Photoshop will allow you to edit in multiple ways. I find this tool to be one of the most common transform tasks used in Photoshop. So for example, I'm going to focus on the blue bird here. So to use the free transform, we must first select the layer we wish to edit. In the layers panel, I will select the Bluebird layer. With the Bluebird layer selected, I will come up to edit, scroll down and select free transform. Now upon click, we will see a square bounding box around the contents of the layer. Now, since this layer only consists of the Bluebird, it's put a square bounding box around the Bluebird. Okay. So for now, I will just press enter. Upon pressing enter, the free transform will be turned off and we will go back to normal. This time, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. To quickly activate the free transform tool, we can press command T on the keyboard. Upon pressing command T, we will activate free transform. And just like before, we can see the square bounding box appear around the item on the layer. So what do we have here? So upon activating free transform, we now have an outline around the object, this bounding box. If we look closely, we can see a number of details. We can see we have eight mini squares around the outline, around the bounding box. Now these are points that we can use to manipulate this object in various ways. So as I move my mouse cursor over any one of these points, you will notice the mouse cursor change. 
This is Photoshop indicating what task this point will perform. So the points on the top and bottom give us the ability to transform the image vertically. For example, I'll place my mouse cursor over the top handle and pull down and up like so. If I place my mouse cursor over the bottom point and pull up and down, you can see I can edit this too. Now, as you have probably already guessed, we can do the same to the sides as well. If I move my mouse cursor over to the right point, I can drag it in and out, and likewise with the point on the left. Now you can also click and drag on the corner points. By clicking and dragging on any one of the corner points, we can alter the scale. Now if you move your mouse cursor just off the corner point and float the mouse near the corner, you will notice the mouse cursor change to a curve with arrows on each end. Well, this is Photoshop communicating you can now click and rotate. So if I click and drag, I can rotate. So with the free transform active on a layer, we can change the height, width and rotation very easily. So I'll just play with the free transform tool on this Bluebird to make a change of it like so. Once I'm happy with the change, I'll simply press enter and the transform will be applied. Simple. So I'm going to press Command Z to undo that and go back to what I had previously. So now I want to demonstrate some useful tips you need to be aware of when using the Free Transform tool. So I'll activate Free Transform again on this layer by pressing Command T. Upon click, we will have the bounding box back. Now there are a number of buttons you can press on the keyboard to control how you make transformations as you apply them. For example, if I press and hold shift on the keyboard and click and drag in and out on one of the corner points, you will notice you can increase or decrease the object to scale. So without shift held down, you can increase and decrease freely, but with shift held down, you can increase and decrease to scale. Convenient. Now here is another interesting one. This time I will click and hold alt on the keyboard by pressing and holding ALT on the keyboard and dragging in and out, this time we will increase and decrease from the center of the image. As we drag, we can do this quite freely. Now with ALT held down, this time I will also press and hold SHIFT. So with SHIFT and ALT held down on the keyboard, this time if I click and drag in and out, I can increase and decrease from the center but to scale. This is really useful to increase or decrease a creative element really fast. Now, another important tip you should be aware of. With Free Transform active on the layer, this time I'm going to move my mouse cursor up to the corner. Instead of putting my mouse cursor on the cursor point, I'll move it just off to get the rotate arrows. So instead of clicking and dragging freely like before, this time I will press and hold SHIFT on the keyboard. With SHIFT held down on the keyboard, as I click to rotate, you will notice the bounding box snap to small increments. This can help if you want to rotate accurately to degrees of 90. One last tip you should keep in mind when using Free Transform is the Distort and Perspective Transform. With the bounding box around your creative object, this time, instead of pressing ALT or SHIFT, this time I'm going to press and hold COMMAND. By pressing and holding COMMAND on the keyboard, if I move my mouse over a point, you will notice it turn white. Now, if I click on a corner point and drag out, I can distort the image. By clicking and dragging on other points, I can alter the perspective and make some quite drastic changes. Once I'm happy, I'll press ENTER to commit though on this occasion I'll press Command Z to undo. So those are some techniques you can use with the free transform tool. Be sure to practice with those techniques to get a good grip of them as you'll be using those techniques a lot in future. Now you can also transform multiple layers in one go. So I'll come over to the layers panel. I'll select the top layer. By pressing and holding shift on the keyboard, I'll then select the blue background layer. Upon click, I will select all the layers in the Layers panel, bar the bottom white base layer. So with all the layers above selected, 
I will press Command T to activate Free Transform. Notice, upon click, the bounding box is now around the biggest element in the selection. And here, the bounding box is around the outside of the canvas area. So with the bounding box active, I can attempt to make any of the transforms you saw in the previous demonstrations. For example, if I wish for all these creative elements to be smaller, I can hold Alt and Shift on the keyboard, click and drag on the top right point and drag in like so. So that's how we can apply modifications to multiple layers at the same time. So I'll just press Command Z to undo that and go back to what I had previous. Now, there are various other transform tools you can explore. This time, I'll select the purple bird. I'll come to Edit, scroll down to Transform, and this time I'll select Warp. Upon click, we will have a different kind of bounded box. With this active, I can click and drag on the corners, like with the free transform, and also on parts of the grid to create a warp effect. I'll press Enter to apply, and Command Z to undo. Next, I'll come to Edit, Transform, and select Perspective. And this time, I can click and drag the points to alter the perspective. So that is how to manipulate your creative elements in Adobe Photoshop using the Transform tools. In the next video, we will be looking at one of the most significant tools in Photoshop, the Brush tool. I will be discussing and demonstrating brushes and how we can use them in our compositions. See you in the next video.